In one hour and rivers raging. What's coming up in the forecast? Caught in the crossfire, the cousin of Chicago Bulls star Dwayne Wade struck and killed by a stray bullet while pushing her baby in a stroller on Chicago's south side. The rising violence hitting close to home for the NBA champ. Comments he made just a day before the murder. Taking heat, Donald Trump under fire again. Is he shifting stances on undocumented immigrants? His meeting with Hispanic leaders. Meanwhile, a Trump ally, Maine's Republican governor, digging in over an obscene message he left for a state Democrat. I would like to talk to you about your comments about my being a racist. That's just the beginning. What started this war of words? Bashed up billionaire, Virgin's Richard Branson and his run in with the road. How the daredevil who crossed the ocean in a hot air balloon and is setting his sights on space says he was nearly killed by a bicycle. Live from ABC News in New York, this is Good Morning America. Good Saturday morning, everyone. We want to thank you for joining us. And we do start here with two developing weather stories. Yeah, look at the map. It's uh, busy out there in the tropics this morning. There's a disturbance heading toward Florida. It's been getting a lot of attention in the media in recent days. In a minute, Rob's going to break down how bad this thing will or will not be. And then overnight, this. A wave of storms hitting downtown Kansas City, Missouri, triggering flash floods. Several people had to be rescued. Yeah, look at this picture posted by a diner at a local restaurant. Floodwaters outside, the power out inside, and a candlelight dinner there. And let's get it over to Rob, who's got all your weather covered this morning. Hi, Rob. Good morning, Paul. Yeah, some of that heavy rain hitting you right in the entertainment district of Kansas City. The radar estimate showing over six inches of rain in just a couple of hours. This is one of many cities, it seems like, in the past month that's been getting hit with flash flooding during the overnight period. And that's exactly what happened in the last 12 hours, causing chaos across Kansas City. Overnight, a flash flood emergency in Kansas City. The storm leaving roads impassable and creating lakes in parking lots. Nearly seven inches of rain forcing the city to shut down in some areas. The rushing water waist high, swallowing everything in its path. The floods wreaking havoc on these cars on the street and in underground parking lots. This creek taking over by roaring rapids and rising over 10 feet in just one hour. This is downtown KC right now. Police keeping busy overnight rescuing stranded residents, some even from the roofs of their cars. Torrential downpours also drenching Indiana. Fast moving thunderstorms dumping an inch of rain in just 30 minutes. And in Iowa, the city of El Cater experiencing near record river flooding after heavy rains drenched that region. The Turkey River cresting at 22 and a half feet. So much humidity in the air this time of year, so all you need is a trigger to get some of that moisture to dump out of the uh, sky rapidly. That's what happened last night. Unfortunately for Kansas City, we've got another batch of rain with some thunderstorms embedded in this about to roll through uh, this area. And then the batch that rolled through Kansas City now heading towards uh, Springfield. And also, I think Chicago will probably see some wet weather this morning. All right, tropics. We've got four circles on the map. Gaston here uh, shouldn't be a bit of an issue that'll bypass Bermuda, but there's an area of disturbed weather just south of Bermuda. We're watching that. This is the one that's been getting a lot of attention uh, the past few days because we we really thought it would develop into something and then make a, a run at Florida. Thankfully, it hasn't really done that, but it is going to make a run at the Gulf of Mexico. About a 20 to 40 percent chance of this developing over the next couple of days. Once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, for Florida, though, in the next 48 hours, just going to be some, some heavy rainfall. Uh, so we could see three or four inches of rainfall across parts of southern Florida. And then this disturbance here just south of uh, Louisiana, that's going to trigger some rain across an area, obviously, that doesn't need any more rainfall. Uh, ho hopefully, most of the heavy stuff will stay uh, across the immediate coastline and in through parts of southeast Texas. So uh, a lot of activity across the uh, Gulf of Mexico, guys, and we'll certainly be monitoring this and more throughout the show. Follow back to you. Yeah, you've always got your eyes on the weather. We'll check in with you a little bit later. Thank you, Rob. And we want to move now to breaking news out of Chicago, where gun violence has hit the family of NBA star Dwayne Wade. His cousin, who was a mother of four, was caught in the deadly crossfire. Now, Wayne Wade had just spoken out about gun violence in his hometown, and ABC's Alex Perez is in Chicago for us this morning. Alex, just an awful story. Yeah, that's right. Good morning, Paula. You know, Dwayne Wade and his family have long spoken out against the violence here in Chicago. His cousin was walking down the street, not the intended target, when she was killed. 
This morning, Chicago's violent crime epidemic hitting the family of NBA superstar Dwayne Wade. We got a crime scene at 6350. We got 32-year-old Nakia Aldridge was pushing a stroller when she was gunned down in the city's south side Friday afternoon. An innocent victim caught in deadly crossfire. The three-time NBA champion just traded to his hometown Bulls, now mourning the death of his cousin, tweeting another act of senseless gun violence. Four kids lost their mom for no reason reason. Hashtag enough is enough. Wade's mother tearfully condemning the loss of her niece. Nakia's mother crying on her shoulder. I believe it's senseless. Just going to register her kids in school and bullets that fly around and have no name decided to find its way to her head. The murder rate in Chicago up a staggering 48% this year. That wave of violence bringing the former Miami Heat star and fellow NBA players to an ESPN town hall just one day before the murder. It's about a whole coming together and understanding that, you know, it's deep rooted and this is something that didn't start today. Um, this is something that's not going to end tomorrow. Police now questioning possible suspects. We are talking to a couple of individuals that were in the area that's given us information regarding this shooting. The community still hoping for change. We're still going to try to help these people to transform their minds and give them a different direction so this thing won't keep happening. And Chicago police here say this is still an ongoing investigation. No arrests have been made. Dan? Very difficult for the family with no arrests having been made. Alex, thank you. Let's turn now to the race for the White House and Donald Trump focusing on a crucial battleground state this morning after a week in which he and Hillary Clinton traded accusations of racism. ABC's David Wright is in Des Moines with that story. David, good morning. Good morning, Dan. This is where it all began a roller coaster ago. Trump comes back to first in the nation, Iowa, this morning uh, to speak at the annual pig roast hosted by Senator Joni Ernst. His appearance here comes at a time when the race has taken a nasty turn. Wow. This week, eager to win over Latino voters, Donald Trump evolved on his signature issue. People don't know how well we're doing with the Hispanics, the Latinos. We're doing so well. Gone are the days when he talked about summarily deporting 11 million undocumented immigrants. But we got some real bad ones, and they're out of here. Your head will spin. This week, his changing positions on that issue might make your head spin. There certainly can be a softening because we're not looking to hurt people. We First people. suggesting he'd yes, soften his people. position on the mass we're deportations, then on CNN. About well, I don't think it's a softening. I think it's... But it's, 11 million people are I, no look, longer going to be deported. I've had people say it's a hardening. Trump's schedule, too, was a moving target. First touting a major speech in Phoenix, then abruptly canceling the Phoenix appearance, then Trump tweets that the event is still on, but changing the venue to a much larger one. But in the end, the event was off. No explanation given. Clinton has used the immigration issue to call Trump out as a racist, also calling him out for the questions he's raised about President Obama's birth. He promoted the racist lie that President Obama is not really an American citizen. But her campaign was the first to raise that issue back in 2007, when her then campaign manager proposed targeting Obama's lack of American roots. As the Trump campaign repeatedly questions Hillary Clinton's physical and mental health, the billionaire's doctor is standing by his glowing prediction that Trump would be the healthiest individual ever elected to the presidency. His health is excellent, particularly his mental health. <laughs> he thinks he's the best, but it works out just fine. The letter that doctor wrote remains the only information Trump has released about his health. The Park Avenue doctor told NBC that he normally wouldn't use such over-the-top language, but in Trump's case, he made an exception. Paula? Thank you very much, David. And there's plenty of political drama in Maine, where the governor there is apologizing for an expletive-laced tirade. Republican Governor Paul LePage lashed out against a Democratic legislator in what you could say was a very colorful, obscenity-packed voicemail. ABC's Devin Dwyer is in our D.C. Bureau with more on the war of words. Good morning, Devin. Good morning, Paul. This is a shocking and offensive voice message from a state's governor. It was made public by his political opponents. But on the recording, Governor Paul LePage says it's a message he wanted the public to hear. This morning, Maine's Republican governor is digging in over an obscene message he left for a state Democrat. This is Governor Paul 
Richard LePage. I would like to talk to you about your comments about my being a racist. I've spent my life helping black people, and you little son of a socialist. I am after you. It's a threat LePage later took further, challenging state rep Drew Gatine to a duel, telling reporters, I would not put my gun in the air, I would point it right between his eyes. I do not apologize to Mr. Gatine for what I said. I don't think it's any more outrageous than him calling me a racist. Gatine denies calling LePage racist, but has accused the governor of using racially charged words, like this description of the state's drug problem during Friday's press conference. And the enemy right now, the overwhelming majority of people coming in are people of color or people of Hispanic origin. The governor repeatedly framing Maine's drug epidemic in racial terms. Earlier this year, he made an explosive claim about heroin traffickers. These are guys that are named D-Money, Smoothie, Shifty. They come up here, they sell their heroin, then they go back home. Incidentally, half the time they impregnate a young white girl before they leave. Now, top Maine Democrats have called LePage unfit for office. He refuses to resign, but LePage, of course, has taken pride in his brash style, saying earlier this year, quote, I was Donald Trump before Donald Trump became popular. Dan? And Donald Trump has praised him. All right, Devin, thank you. We're going to move on now to the parents of a young American woman killed after being kidnapped and tortured by ISIS. They're now speaking out about a promise from the president that they say was not kept. This as a playground in honor of their daughter, Kayla Mueller, will be dedicated this morning. And ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, has their story. My name is Kayla Mueller. It's been three years this month that Kayla Mueller was first taken hostage by ISIS. It's, it's very terrifying here. <laughs> her parents, Marsha and Carl, learned of her death 18 months later <laughs> when ISIS sent pictures of Kayla's body. President Obama said he was heartbroken and traveled to Arizona to meet the Mueller's and asked what he could do for them. And I said, Mr. President, I'd be remiss if I didn't give you the opportunity to support Kayla's foundation. And he Thank said, you. I will help that foundation. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting. There hasn't been such a donation? No. I'm still waiting for that donation, mm -hmm. Mr. President. At the White House Friday, ABC News correspondent John Carl pressed for an explanation. Can the Mueller family expect that the president, that the Obamas, will make a donation to their foundation in the name of Kayla Mueller soon? Uh, the the as I mentioned, I, I can't speak to any previous conversations that they've had, but I can tell but, you but, that... But is a donation coming? But, but, but the, the foundation uh, that uh, Kayla's hands that's been established in her memory uh, is certainly the kind of foundation that the president uh, and first lady have supported in the past, and I would anticipate that they would make a financial contribution to continue supporting. The foundation is so important to the Mueller's because they say it helps to keep the memory of Kayla alive, a young woman who loved children and put her life at risk to help them in places far from the comfort of her own home. This Arizona playground, in memory of Caleb, will be dedicated in a ceremony later today. Brian Ross, ABC News, Prescott, Arizona. Our thanks to Brian for that report. Yeah, let's check in with Ron for a look at the other headlines that we're covering this morning. Good morning, Ron. Good morning to you, Paula and Dan, Sarah, Robert. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. We begin with breaking news overnight, an arrest in connection with the murder of two nuns in Mississippi. 46-year-old Rodney Earl Sanders has been taken into custody and charged with two counts of capital murder. Sister Paula uh, Merrill and Sister Margaret Held were both found a dead of stab wounds Thursday morning in their home in the town of Durant. Police not revealing a motive uh, for those murders. And in Italy, a day of national mourning as the first victims of that massive earthquake are laid to rest. This is aftershocks are still jolting that uh, central part of the country where the quake struck earlier this week. The death toll now rising to nearly 300 people killed, more than 30 still missing. The last uh, living victim was rescued Wednesday night. Hope fading as rescuers use high-tech cameras to search for possible survivors. Work crews hoisting uh, into damaged homes, helping retrieve the belongings of families affected. And back in the U.S., the FDA recommending a new precaution against the Zika outbreak. The agency advising that all blood donations should be screened for the virus. There are more than 2,500 cases of Zika in the 50 states so far. However, there are no known cases of Zika transmission from blood transfusions here in the U.S. 
And a federal judge has ruled in favor of two transgender students and an employee of the University of North Carolina saying the school cannot block them from using bathrooms that match their gender self-identity. This ruling, of course, conflicts with a new state law, the state's so-called bathroom law that restricts the uh, restroom a person can use to the gender on their birth certificate. That decision is affecting only those three people so far. And in France, the country's highest court overturning the so-called burkini ban in a town near Nice. The ban allowed uh, the full body bathing suits used by some women to be a uh, restricted ban, that is. About 30 seaside towns have issued these bans and could be affected by the decision. The restrictions have sparked international outcry. And an amazing rescue of two people stranded on an uninhabited island in the western Pacific. The crew of a U.S. Navy plane spotting the huge SOS. You see it there written in the sand. Uh, they called the Coast Guard from Guam, which sent a ship to get the two stranded boaters. The pair had been missing for a week. Kind of reminds me of Gilligan's Island. <laughs> You know that. Remember that one, right? Without We're not adults. Yeah. And uh, finally, uh, most of us dread a trip to the DMV, but uh, some people in a town in North Carolina actually go to their DMV, imagine this, to relax. No. Hmm, take a look at this. The DMV in Holly Springs, North Carolina. That's a cafe in the DMV that serves sweets and smoothies. Oh, There's even an area, play area, Dan, for kids. What about you happen to be there. Are you saying Dan, Dan is a kid or <laughs> no, Dan I mean, for his child? Dan may think about bringing his son there. So. I think this is and a the, vile government conspiracy of some sort. To get you to renew a your vile, license? Yes. I'm sure of it. Listen, so the, the manager said some people actually really? go inside and then come back out because they can't believe they went into a DMV. Exactly, right. This <laughs> can't be the DMV. Yeah, this can't you know be the what? DMV. You said that you were going to have this story and we all tried to guess what part of the country. I knew it had to be somewhere in the South. Where was it? Southern North hospitality. Carolina. Holly Northern Holly Springs. Yeah. North Carolina. Right? Yes. Uh, the How's DM the weather there in the South? Right um, actually, um, he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Uh, this video out of Huntsville, Alabama, where it is the south, and they had some uh, stormy conditions there. With uh, uh, winds gusting over 60 miles an hour at times, knocking out some power, even at, uh, igniting some of the power lines with transformers uh, blowing up uh, around uh, Huntsville. That happened around 6 o'clock yesterday afternoon. There's a little shelf cloud uh, from a storm that was rolling that way. Then we go out west to Kern County, uh, uh, California. Um, the range fire here getting up to about 600 acres with 0% containment. One of uh, a couple of dozen fires that are burning in the west. And this is causing some air quality issues across parts of central California. And we've got red flag warnings that are posted for western Wyoming and critical fire danger in parts of uh, eastern Washington and Oregon as well. Another hot day for Lewiston and then windy conditions will be starting to crank up. I think that will peak later on tonight. Lewiston could see winds gusting over 34 miles per hour as this cold front that drops down and cools things off, but obviously the wind's not, uh, not helping there. Flash flood watch out for uh, Prescott to uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, as an enhanced monsoon flow gets going today. That's a quick check on what's going on nationally. Here now is your local forecast. Great pool weather coming up for today. Temperature is going to be coming into the lower 90s both Saturday and Sunday. Lots of sunshine, mostly sunny conditions both days. Feeling a little less humid for Saturday and Sunday, but as we head into the early half of the week, things are hot and humid, feeling quite steamy, and we will be watching our temperatures remain above average right through the middle half of the week, adding in the chance for a spotty thunderstorm both for Tuesday and Wednesday afternoon. All right, it is a uh, Saturday in August. We, of course, will then have the beach forecast coming up in the next half an hour. With lots of beach balls for Sarah. Uh, we'll, we'll get them blown up lots for you. Them. Are We're you coming. ready for some baseball? Let's yes. do it. Is that the saying? Are you ready for some That's baseball? Well, it's oh, baseball, it's okay. but it's okay. Even I knew that. <laughs> That's bad when you're trumped by Dan. <laughs> the excitement is reaching a fever pitch at the Little League World Series. Young athletes with big dreams are battling it out for the championship title with the final four teams taking the field this afternoon. It's the big weekend for these Little League Titans. Being in the Little League World Series was like one of the best things in my life. The top four teams in the world set to battle it out for baseball supremacy. Of the four, two American teams remain. Make them pay, eyes on the ball. The Goodlettsville Tennessee All-Stars slugging their way to victory in dramatic fashion. Grand slam for Zach McWilliams. Now vying for their second shot at glory, hoping to avenge their loss in the 2012 title game. To make it here twice is amazing, but to actually go to the championship game twice is unbelievable. But to get that chance, they'll have to make it through the undefeated upstarts from upstate. Maine and well, the first upstate New York team to make it to the Little League World Series in 39 years. Making it to the U.S. championship knowing that we made it this far.